Hello, I'm the Game Professor, and welcome to Games as Lit 101. I really enjoyed Code Vein, and so I want to talk about it. I, I, I couldn't come up with an intro for this one. Code Vein has been out a while now, and its marketing, especially the word of mouth marketing, largely banked on the phrase anime Dark Souls. And it's not hard to see why. I imagine if someone were to mod an anime-looking character into Dark Souls, it would look very similar to the gameplay footage we saw of Code Vein coming up to its release. But now that it's out, I think there's a bit more to it than that, and digging deeper into what anime Dark Souls actually means can be kind of a fascinating discussion. Both of these terms carry a lot of meaning behind their basic definitions, and I wonder how accurate the whole anime Dark Souls thing ended up being of the final product. Let's start with this one. Dark Souls is a fantasy action RPG from 2011, but that's not really enough to describe it, is it? I could say that it's a series that consists of three games made from 2011 to 2016. I could say that it's a defining part of a consistent body of work from Japanese game developer From Software. I could even say it's a whole video game genre, uncreatively referred to as Souls-like. But when we're talking about how Dark Souls informs our discourse of other games, Dark Souls is a lot more than any of those things. Dark Souls is an idea perhaps even an ideal in some people's minds. Games are elevated to that level sometimes, like what Mario did for platformers, Ocarina of Time for 3D action games, or Modern Warfare for first-person shooters. Dark Souls, the game, did something so unique and new, not counting Demon's Souls, the previous game, which did similar things but didn't gain the same traction, that the entire industry took notice and started sneaking these ideas into other games. When we say a game is like Dark Souls, we are in many ways referencing an idea that Dark Souls represents more than we're referencing the specific elements of the video game Dark Souls. But like a lot of ideas, it's commonly misunderstood and misused, which has the effect of sort of simplifying its meaning in the pop culture discourse. This is far from the first time this has happened, of course, from Romeo and Juliet's characterization as an epic romance, to the way some communities romanticize Tyler Durden as an insightful hero of anarchy, to the idea that 1984 is primarily about surveillance instead of fascism as a whole. The idea of Dark Souls has seen similar abuse. We see this easily in the rather extreme examples, like when the Crash Bandicoot remaster was compared to Dark Souls just because it's hard. But this hazy, generalized idea of Dark Souls is applied on one level or another in most comparisons, even sometimes those in FromSoft's actual catalog. There are a lot of details we could go over regarding what exactly makes a game similar to Dark Souls, and there is some variety in exactly what elements of the game these comparisons tend to draw from. Mostly, though, it's the difficulty. That Crash Bandicoot example is pretty easy to pick apart, so let's go back to that. The entire premise of this comparison is that Crash Bandicoot is hard, and thus, it is like Dark Souls. The release of the Insane Trilogy surprised some people who'd forgotten just how tough the first game in particular can be, and that invited the Just Like Dark Souls comparison. Of course, the two games are completely different, not just because they're entirely different genres, but even in the gameplay dynamics of the difficulty itself. Crash is entirely about speedy and precise movement, while Dark Souls is about reading enemy movements and responding with careful, considered actions. Dark Souls' RPG elements make it largely about managing statistics and abilities, while Crash's abilities remain almost entirely static throughout the first two games. Dark Souls also punishes failure heavily, and in doing so rewards players for learning from their failures and successfully returning to the site of their defeat, while Crash uses the old lives system that's essentially just a limit on how many times you get to try a level before you have to start all over again. We don't want to dwell on any one comparison too much, but the point here is that it's worth not only considering that Dark Souls is difficult, but considering how it's difficult, because that's what separates it from Celeste, Mega Man, Ninja Gaiden, or the countless other difficult games out there. There is more to the identity of Dark Souls than just that it's hard to succeed at playing it. But there's another element of this that we're still overlooking, and that is that Dark Souls is not just a difficult third-person action game, it's also a post-apocalyptic medieval fantasy game, and a pretty unique one as they go. It has a heavy visual focus on the macabre, a dark atmosphere and tone rarely interrupted by music or other characters, a game map that connects in unexpected ways with shortcuts and doorways connecting early areas with late ones, and a rather unique style of storytelling that relies on snippets of information and understated backstory details rather than overt, detailed exposition. 
This stuff is just as central to the identity of Dark Souls as the combat style and difficulty, which is what makes even some games of a completely different genre, like Hollow Knight, feel so much like Dark Souls, despite that one being a side-scrolling metroidvania that bears little resemblance to it on a gameplay level. There's a lot of emphasis out there on Dark Souls as a gameplay experience, which isn't illegitimate, but I mean, I've, I've even seen the game used to argue that narrative content is entirely unnecessary in video games. But I don't think that's accurate to what Dark Souls is. It only takes a glance at the community searching every nook and cranny of these games for all the little narrative scraps they can find to piece together the lore and the backstory and the current scenario. There's clearly more to Dark Souls than just having a hard time fighting dudes, and in fact, I would argue that the story and its delivery and the world building are just as much a defining element of this series as the difficulty and the gameplay are. There's nothing wrong with a game like Dark Souls being elevated from a single video game to a broader idea. In fact, it happens to most influential works on one level or another. The issue is that if we're going to try and use that idea to better understand other games, we would really do well to have a better grasp on it than just, it's a hard video game. Which brings us to the second part of this discussion regarding Code Vein, anime. There are less steps on the path to anime's ideification, if you will, but it's still there. Technically, anime is just animation from Japan. But out here, we've sort of lumped in the entire art style, so even American-made shows like Avatar The Last Airbender are often included under the idea of anime, or video games like Code Vein, which, you know, is a video game, not an animated feature. It's even sometimes used broadly to refer to fantasy animation that takes itself more seriously than stereotypical American cartoons, regardless of style, like the criminally underrated French show Wafu. We can see that anime has also become more of an idea than any one single strictly defined thing. And this is complicated even further by the fact that that idea is going to mean something a bit different in a place here like the United States than in its home country of Japan, especially since anime and video games are often the predominant, if not only, form of Japanese media that we over here regularly consume. As such, many things that we think of as anime are really just broader Japanese cultural values or tropes that we don't see as often in media from America or Europe. And then there's an added layer of complication on this because Dark Souls is a Japanese game. It has a lot more in common with games made over here than over there, but it is still Japanese. All that just makes it a little difficult to really talk about this subject, since we essentially risk reducing an entire culture down to the trends we notice in its animated features, and that's that's not great. But the type of meaning that we infuse the term anime with is the kind of thing we need to consider when we're talking about what it means to call something anime Dark Souls. It takes just a quick glance at the game to see the anime art style, but one has to wonder if that's all the game has in common with anime. There's more to the idea of anime than just the visual style, after all. By and large, we tend to think of anime as relatively exposition-heavy, with larger-than-life visual flair, where characters emotionally explain their feelings and experiences and strategies and fantasy plots twist and turn through increasingly complex events. This is most certainly not emblematic of all anime, of course. In fact, it's pretty specifically about shonen anime, like Naruto, My Hero Academia, and Full Metal Alchemist. For that matter, it's just as easily applied to many Japanese games, comics, and other media besides animation. Like I said, talking about how we in America generally perceive and discuss art from another country comes with a lot of potentially culturally sensitive caveats, but when we say something is anime, these are some of the elements that define what that word means. Which brings us, finally, to Code Vein. If Code Vein truly is anime Dark Souls, that comparison should hopefully have more meaning than just Dark Souls with a visual style similar to anime. So now that we've sort of identified the ideas of anime and of Dark Souls, we can see how well the term actually fits. Let's just get out of the way that Code Vein is, in many ways, more similar to Bloodborne than Dark Souls. The speed of combat, mechanics to encourage continued attacks rather than retreats, a setting that's more modern than medieval, all that stuff. It's true, certainly, but remember we're talking about the idea of Dark Souls here, which absolutely includes Bloodborne as part of it. We could technically call it anime Bloodborne, but that would invoke all kinds of more specific things like Lovecraftian elements and other specifics that go beyond the broader idea of Dark Souls, so we're just going to stick with this. 
Code Vein is very Soulsian in its combat, of course. The setting and aesthetic is very much in the Dark Souls tradition, too. A dark, ruined world with occasional glimpses of beauty through which, if you're paying attention, you can catch hints and glimpses of an unknown past. The anime shines through the character designs and art style, of course, with all the cool, overcomplicated outfits and exhaustively detailed character creator that brings your anime OCs to life and, well, you know, the whole anime thing. Round faces, big eyes, super cool outfits that don't care about the post-apocalyptic availability of fabric and sewing supplies, all that good stuff. But where this combination of anime and Dark Souls gets really interesting, I mean, at least to me, the guy with the web series about video game stories, is in the story, both the story itself and how it's delivered. A good chunk of Code Vein's story is in its backstory, which is a very Soulsian element. It's also told in little pieces and hinted at through small bits of dialogue, environments, and item descriptions, and especially early on, it doesn't try too hard to help you put those pieces together. This backstory is about the fall of civilization and the hubris of humankind that contributed to it. Again, extremely Dark Souls. But it's also far more focused on its characters, and it's from this distinction that most of the anime creeps into what is otherwise a fairly textbook Souls-like experience. Code Vein is slow to dole out its character development and world building, but it does eventually do it, and it does it with all the monologuing and flashbacks you'd expect from a popular anime series. You walk through the memories of various characters, piecing together their past for your benefit and their own, since Revenants have little memory of their past. The game even spends the first half dropping hints and brief comments about the Queen, and teasing your past involvement with it all. Then, about halfway through, you just get to play through a flashback. Which isn't without precedent in the Soulsborne formula, since Sekiro did exactly the same thing, but it's still a departure from the core idea of Dark Souls. The result is not only that we understand much more of the story with much less work than Dark Souls, but that the game's themes are much more explicitly communicated. Another part of this as well is that the mechanics and story don't mesh in quite the same way they do in Dark Souls. I would argue they still mesh rather well, but they end up meaning something different because they interact differently. Dark Souls is, in part, about perseverance and growth, which is the core goal of the gameplay loop as well as a major element of the story itself. Who you are is who you become through work and effort. Code Vein's gameplay promotes something similar, but the story is more about injustice, rebellion, and interpersonal connection, which are very common messages for anime, and this is reflected primarily not in the core gameplay, but in the character customization, where you switch easily between blood codes and abilities you gain through other characters. The result, as far as the meaning of the gameplay goes, is that your perseverance isn't as important to the story as the way you use the abilities and attributes that you gain through your connection to other people. The mechanics and story of Code Vein are primarily connected to your relationships with other characters, rather than your perseverance through the game. In fact, the game undergoes a rather important shift partway through, almost as though it's slowly transforming from Dark Souls to an anime as it goes along. The game is at its most Soulsian in its opening hours, and by the end, we're having long emotional cutscenes where crying characters wrestle with their connection to others amid challenging revelations and developments. Whereas Dark Souls relies on intermittent conversations with NPCs to advance their storylines, Code Vein takes more time to dive more deeply into their histories and personalities. Both games heavily derive their meaning from these characters, but Dark Souls relies on a lot of inference and implication, while Code Vein progressively uses more detailed dialogue and emotional set-piece moments. Code Vein never completely loses its connection to Soulsian design, though. The gameplay is, of course, very similar throughout, and the whole structure of the game is also very familiar to a Souls-like experience. For that matter, outside of the main cast, there are other NPCs that the player encounters throughout the game, which you can continue to encounter if you do what they need when they show up, which is pretty much identical to how Dark Souls tends to handle its NPC characters. But all told, that's what strikes me the most about Code Vein, as a mashup between these ideas of anime and Dark Souls. The superficial elements of both are definitely there, but the deeper you look, the more you actually do continue to find DNA from both parts of that identity. A backstory that's referenced in passing whispers and item descriptions, but that eventually blossoms into a backstory sequence that fundamentally changes how we understand our character. A number of NPCs we can help along the way, but they actually can end up safe and happy instead of inevitably turning hollow if we help them. A world ravaged by a tragic cycle of life and rebirth, corrupting all within it as it desperately attempts to hold off the darkness, but also a clear message on what the best outcome is and what kind of person must bring it about. 
Code Vein retains much of what makes Dark Souls feel like Dark Souls, but puts its own spin on it that is very decidedly, insofar as this term can be used to generalize an art form from another country, anime. The comparison to Dark Souls falls apart for a lot of games the moment you ask any questions beyond, is it difficult? But I, I think that Code Vein really earns the mashup that we so often attribute to it. It manages to embody both the ideas of Dark Souls and of anime in a way that honors both of them while still sort of creating something unique with its own identity, and I'm just happy to see that, like Dark Souls comparison, actually check out in a meaningful and interesting way for once. What game do you think managed to most effectively embody the idea of Dark Souls? Did it also bring its own sense of self to the table? Talk about it in the comments! If you enjoyed the video, make sure to do all the YouTube stuff and check the description for links to Games as Lit 101 on social media and on Patreon. Thanks for watching.